Hello and welcome to another English lesson. Today we'll continue with the topic of heroes. Today's lesson was prepared by Jelena Zdrilic and myself, Davor Chep. So today we'll be doing a bit of reading, listening, speaking, writing, describing. Let's get ready. As usual, get yourself a notebook, pen or pencil, or some other equipment you need. Here are some of the links you need for this lesson. The most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. You say hello to others. And then you wonder why you're here. People tell you to be brave. You do extraordinary things. You feel strong. You sacrifice. And as the famous David Bowie song says, we can be heroes just for one day. Well, talking about heroes. Last week you had a few lessons about, for example, Helen Keller, a very extraordinary person who in spite her visual impairment and hearing impairment, managed to achieve great things in her life, not just for herself, but for women and generally people in the world. Then you could uh, learn about Louis Braille, who was also visually impaired, but is very important in the creation of writing uh, system that helps blind people to read. So, these are some of the heroes you talked about last week. So, to kind of revise, let's answer these three questions. So, who are heroes or heroines? What makes them great? And which attributes do they possess? So, first question. People who have done something remarkable like we just, like you saw last week with Helen Keller or uh, Louis Braille, or we can say they were courageous, and they have also overcome great obstacles. So these are heroes. What makes them great? It's their character, it's their acts of courage and kindness. This is what makes them great. And some of the attributes they possess, well, being brave, strong, kind, fearless, emphatic, selfless, generous, persistent. These are some of the attributes you can find in heroes. So, here are some more heroes. Uh, some of them you might have heard of, some of them you might not have heard of, but what I would like you to do is go through this list. So we have people here from Robin Hood, Florence Nightingale, Martin Luther, Neil Armstrong, Matya Gubitz, Kata Penevich, Mahatma Gandhi, Superman, Schindler, Hercules, Fleming, Alexander the Great, Nikola Yurishich, Ulysses, Roald Amundsen, Richard I, Rosa Parks, David Livingston, Batman, Nelson Mandela. So what I would like you to do is think about a hero and put a hero into a column. So you can choose between a hero being a social or political activist. He could be a war or a battle hero. A researcher, scientist, medical worker, imaginary world or legend, a place where the hero comes for, from. Uh, to give you a little hint, uh, there are distributed evenly, so each category should hold five heroes. So who are our heroes? Researchers, imaginary world, war, battle hero, social political activist.
So the research scientist medical worker, we have people like Florence Nightingale, Neil Armstrong, David Livingstone, Alexander Fleming, and Roald Emerson. Then, from the imaginary world or world of legends, we have Ulysses, Superman, Robin Hood, Batman, or Hercules. From the world of war and battle heroes, there is the famous Matija Gubec, Nikola Jurišić, Richard the Lionheart, Alexander the Great, and Kata Penović. And the last category, social and political activist, Rosa Parks, Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, Oscar Schindler, and Martin Luther King Jr. So these are our heroes. So these were our heroes. Uh, if there is a person from this task that you haven't heard about yet, you can do some research and find out about this person and what are the main things that made him or her great. Let's move on. So you're going to read an article about a famous singer whose courageous military service made him a hero in a critical situation, long before his successful musical career. Uh, the links here take you to the story and also to one of the first hits this singer had. So, before you read the text, there are, these are the four questions that I would like you to answer. What was the mission of the troops stationed in Kosovo in 1999? The troops belonged to two different military sites. Which ones? What exactly did James Blunt do that took a lot of courage and guts? And how did his decision affect the mission in Kosovo? Uh, please follow the link and uh, answer these questions. So let's check your answers. So, what was the mission of the troops stationed in Kosovo in 1999? Their mission was to keep tension from breaking out into violence. The troops belonged to two different military sites. Which ones? It was a joint peacekeeping task force made up of Russian and NATO soldiers. So, what exactly did the James Bond do? He refused to invade and take over an airfield where the Russian army had already settled before the NATO troops arrived. He felt invading would cause undue tension with the Russians and potentially undo all of the peacekeeping that had taken place since the Kosovo war ended just a few days prior. So how did his decision affect the mission? They were able to resolve the conflict peacefully. So, uh, an additional exercise can be found on the following link. Uh, find in the text four words or phrases that mean put on a trial by a military tribunal, a soldier higher in rank in charge of, some, of more soldiers and with greater responsibility, reaching a solution and going beyond a normal or acceptable limit in degree or amount. So follow the link and do the task, you will find the text there, and also when you do the task, you'll get your answers. What do heroes do? This is a transformation exercise. We have words and phrases in brackets and we'll transform them into another form to complete these sentences. So the first sentence, jumping into the flames to grab the baby, was pure bravery in the face of danger. Uh, what did Peter do to help her overcome her initial insecurity about the task she had received? He went out of the way. Some of our journalists deserve the highest honors for fearlessly exposing corruption in the highest political ranks. And the last one, a bit difficult, don't is a synonym for the word uh, discouraged. So he seemed undaunted 
by all the opposition to his idea, so he wasn't discouraged or he kept his courage. So here we could see again a couple of characteristics of heroes being brave, helpful, fearless, and not being discouraged. Let's move on. Here we have uh, four different... So there, Valiant, Bold, and Hero. So Neil Armstrong's walking space was daring. She tried to defend him against his critics, so she stood by him. How valiantly. Frederick was renowned for his boldness and promptness of decision as well for his ready wit and much life experience. And we watched our teams, uh, we were looking for an adjective. Heroic struggle to win back the cup after too many attempts in the past years. So these are just some examples of what heroes do. Now you're going to do uh, another activity. You're going to watch and listen to Matia's story. So who is Matia? That's what you're going to find out. The questions. How long did it take for Matia to recover from the accident? What helped him to get better? Why do you think he turned back to alcohol and drug abuse after such a terrible accident? How did he find hope and purpose? What does he do now? How many schools and which countries has he visited in the past 12 years? Which sports is he actively involved in and what other hobbies and interests does he also have? And what, his, what is his final message to the young generation? So Mattia is another real hero that we're going to look at today. So watch the video and try to answer these questions. Hi guys, my name is Matja, I'm 40, I live in Zaprosic, and this is my story. First of all, I'd like to begin with a statement. The most important days in your life are the day when you were born and the day when you find out why. In my case, the problem was the length of time between my most important two days. Actually, to figure out why I was here, it took me 23 years. I was 17 and uh, my friend picked me up on a motorcycle one Saturday evening. I was standing at the bar in the nightclub and uh, my plan was, like every other Saturday, to get drunk, dance and have a good time. Well, that is about the last scene uh, I remember about the uh, the day when I had a motorcycle accident. I woke up uh, from half coma condition after two weeks in hospital. I didn't remember anything. The only thing I knew is that I had broken my spine and that I didn't feel my legs. I had two severe surgeries and barely stayed alive. As I said, I was 17 and there was no way that I was going to live as a wheelchair user. You have to take into consideration that prior to the accident, I was a skater, roller skater, biker and snowboarder. And uh, to accept uh, a wheelchair lifestyle was a huge mountain to climb. While I was laying in my hospital room, I was seriously considering committing a suicide. But as time was passing, I started exercising and I was trying to recover. Two years after, I was feeling better mentally and physically. And I started going back to a normal way of life as much as I could. I was still in a wheelchair, but uh, that didn't stop me from partying in the nightclubs, drinking and uh, using drugs. I even bought a BMW and put the hand commands in the car 
I was working out and I had a nice girlfriend. So I thought, what more can one have? After a few years of partying, I messed up my mind and I couldn't function normally. I was 22 and my life was on a downward spiral. I was a mentally messed up person in a wheelchair. Peace was something far, far away and my life was kind of fading. In my deepest struggles, humbled by my circumstances, I looked for help and uh, I met two guys who introduced me to my personal hero. In a very short amount of time, uh, through reading the book about Jesus and surrendering my life to him, I experienced such peace and uh, acceptance, a joy wrapped up in love and security, something that I needed so much. Uh, drugs and alcohol lost the grip on me and my hero became my best friend. My encounter with the God of hope led me to a purpose-driven life that I live today. I traveled to all parts of Croatia and uh, speak in our primary and secondary schools about purpose and meaning, encouraging students to say no, drugs and alcohol. In the past uh, 12 years, I visited about 100 schools in Croatia and uh, a number of schools in the neighboring countries. I had also an opportunity to share my story in the United States and in Africa too. I also have uh, the privilege to be a part of the leadership on youth summer camps and uh, to invest in younger generations, help them navigate the currents of life. In spite of uh, any disability, I think we all need movement. So I continue to be physically active through various sporting activities skiing, cycling, and swimming. I love music very much, so I learned to play a guitar and saxophone. No matter what the circumstances are, life is good. And because of that, uh, I would like to finish with one short story. There were two wise men. One was young and one was old. The young wise man was quite arrogant and was thinking that he could trick the older wise man so he could become wiser or better than him. So the young wise man thought to himself, I'll take a butterfly in my hands and ask the old wise man if the butterfly is alive or dead. If he says the butterfly is alive, I'll squeeze the hands and kill the butterfly. If he says the butterfly is dead, I will let it go. So the young wise man came to the old wise man and asked him, is this butterfly dead or alive? The old wise man was thinking for a while and then said, the answer is in your hands. In other words, decisions led by your conscious will determine your life's quality. Thank you guys for your attention. See you and maybe talk to you in person somewhere in the future. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's check your answers. Of course, before we check our answers, you can pause the, this video again and following the QR code or the link below, you can watch the video again and uh, answer all the questions you didn't manage to first time. So, it took Mattia two years to recover from the accident. 
and exercising helped him get better. He might have felt desperate and hopeless, or he was too young to understand the magnitude of the accident. Maybe he was trying to forget the bad event through alcohol and drugs, which is never good. So he learned about the God who loved him and who still had a plan or a good plan for his life. He travels to all parts of Croatia, visiting schools and talking to youth about how to say no to drugs and alcohol. In the past 12 years, he has visited about 100 schools in Croatia and the neighboring countries, as well as some in Africa and the United States. He is skiing, cycling and swimming and he plays the guitar and the saxophone. His final message to the youth is that our decision lead the course of our life. What did Mattia tell us? For example, Mattia says, my plan was to have a good time as usual. So how would you report this to somebody who hasn't seen a video? Matthias said that his plan had been to have a good time as usual. So, what are you doing here? You are reporting Matthias' words. Here is another example. Matthias says, I didn't remember anything. How would you report this? Matthias said that he hadn't remembered anything. In these two examples, you can see two changes. You can see a change of pronouns from a my to his and from I to he. And we see a shift in tenses. So past simple was changed into past perfect. How did we introduce the reported sentences? Using the phrase said that. So there was also a change or shift in tenses in the verb say. Here are two more examples. Matthias says, I have broken my spine. How would you report this using the verb tell? Matthias told us that he had broken his spine. You can also notice here that pronouns have to be changed uh, wherever they are in the sentence. And here is an example of a question. Is the butterfly in my hands alive or dead? How would you report a question? For example, one wise man asked the other wise man if the butterfly in his hands was alive or dead. What you notice here is that besides shifting tenses, we also changed from the question form into a statement form. So yes, we are talking about reported speech. Here are two useful links reported speech and reporting verbs. You can use these two links to kind of revise on what you know about reported speech. How would we define reported speech? What would you say to someone? What is reported speech? So the name itself tells us that we use it to report somebody's words. Why do we do it? Well, it is very often difficult to say exactly or use the exact words somebody else used. So we use the reported speech to avoid any uh, misinterpretation or similar things. So uh, uh, to avoid this trap of saying something that somebody hadn't told us, uh, we use reported speech. So as I said, follow the links and revise the rules. In case there is maybe something you 
haven't heard of before you do the revision, please note these things in your notebook. So to give you a little short list on reported speech. So we use re different reporting verbs to introduce reported speech. Depending on the context, we use verbs like say, tell, ask, advise, agree, and so on. The tense shift, for example, I live in Zagreb, he said he lived in Zagreb. Questions turn to indirect questions. So what did you do last summer? She asked me what I did last summer. Yes, no questions are introduced using the words if and whether. Time expressions change. Yesterday changes to the day before. And there is a change of pronouns. For additional reported speech exercises, follow the link. And after you do the exercises, make sure to click the button show explanation for any additional uh, explanations you might need. And now back to you. Uh, there are two tasks. You can choose between one of these two tasks and do the following. Task one. Do you know anyone in your life who has overcome a difficult situation or helped someone come out of these difficult situations? If you don't know such a person, you can do some research. Ask your friends or parents and try to find out who they are and what makes these people heroes. Make yourself notes and share a talk with your friends or classmates about these people. Task number two, using the following links, watch the video again and using the reporting verbs that we talked about in this lesson, write a short report in five to ten sentences about Matthias' story. An extra, something that might come in handy, since your Matura examination is coming closer, uh, here is a little useful link on the words we use to introduce contrast, purpose, reason, and result. You can follow the link and do the activities. And of course, there is also the check answers button where you will get more feedback and explanation on the use of these linkers or connectors. To conclude our lesson for today, here is a little evaluation table. Uh, there are a couple of questions here. After you have done the video, try to put ticks next to the things you did. So if you have answered most of the questions from the video, put the tick in the first column. And if you haven't read the text about a hero gone music star, put the tick in the second column. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and hope we'll see each other next time. Bye.